And for this, I'm going to the other very young co composer of this uh, uh, round table, uh, Meppo. She is the um, creative mind and the founder of the, the Smiling Foundation. Foundation. This foundation started in a very, very humble way, and that was uh, Lidwin, we, who was traveling around, traveling around the world, and helping children who had educational needs. From that, in 2002, the foundation expanded to help people help women, especially women in developing countries which were burdened and by uh, the cultural and traditional based, I would call aberration, like for example genital mutilation. In 2011, uh, they added a new program which was uh, called Diabetes Rescue because they realize that diabetes is one of the worst illnesses that kills so many people in Africa. And one of the reasons is that very few people are aware and know something about this illness. So these are the main objectives and aims of uh, the foundation, and now I give you the floor. Thank you. Executive directors, distinguished uh, guests, Ladies and gentlemen, I salute uh, you all. Thank you to um, Oka for allowing the Smiling Foundation to share all we do in regard to uh, technology in Africa. Our thoughts and global poverty and to share the work we do to promote education and to eradicate, uh, eradicate poverty in some area in Africa. I'm not gonna share everything that we do, but I'm just gonna just speak more, mostly in, uh, in regard to technology. Put some pictures together just to share with you. And in Africa, for example, we have what we call the mobile money. The mobile money is something that people uh, transfer money through uh, the phone system. In some areas it, it works, in, in some areas it doesn't work because some people are not really aware, or maybe I always speak about it, the cultural belief where uh, elderly does not believe on that system doesn't believe about that system. And we also have MoneyGram, we have Western Union who are suspended, for example, in Cameroon because of the tax uh, reason. We also have virtual money in still, who is still an abstract culture aspect in Angola, Cameroon, Senegal, and Morocco as uh, those women share with me uh, in, on a daily basis. Right now, what we do, we created libraries everywhere we go for women at least to learn how to write their name, which is very difficult. And you're gonna see the picture and maybe a video at the end, how they feel about it. And during uh, CSW that just passed, 61, we had over 50 women coming from 18 countries just to come here and share their stories, just two, two, two months ago, I would say. And this is what we do, we go to villages and then we learn to teach them how to uh, write their name. And you would be surprised that we have people, uh, women who are even 50, 60, who never even know what to pay or how to hold the pen, which is very sad. And for some reason, there's something also, um, telemedicine is very important in Africa. People contact me, for example, and then they say, oh, can we send you some um, technology to send to hospital or something? First of all, so most of the system are very corrupted. And you cannot bring, for example, a, a machine or maybe a device that it's not compatible with the country because maybe the voltage is not the same in that country. Not even going far, at this moment, some people does not believe in Wi-Fi or what is uh, Wi-Fi. And even if they know uh, what is Wi-Fi, some of them stay two days or three days without charging their phone. So it's, uh, it's a still an issue in many countries, not even one, not two, and three. You're gonna see at the end and I'm gonna show you the pictures and stuff. Look, for example, I have here some women who are, that's how they leave. They have to um, feed the kids while traveling four kilometers, 18 kilometers, just to get food from one direction to, to, to the next. So when you come and speak about education, they ask you, do I really care about that when my kids have an ear or, or anything like that? So it's very concerning. You see uh, no infrastructure to perform certain practice. 
We have a video showing how women felt after learning for the first time to write their name in Morocco last year in COP22. Mm -hmm. So we went inside, uh, inside profound villages to just ask them, what is it that you need? How do you feel? And after learning, we created three days um, workshop to teach them how to write their name, how to uh, take uh, better care of their children. And, and after the workshop, they were very impressed and happy. They were even dancing. You can see that on the video, but I mean, it's not playing. And it, it means that we have to do something. And we cannot just sit down and say that it's okay for people not to learn how to write their name. It's not okay for them to sit down and think that, you know what, we are, there's a distance between, between the government and maybe us, or maybe feel that, you know what, we are not better enough like those people over there and now we are here. So I think it's time for us to uh, do what we're supposed to do to make this happen. And uh, I won't be too long because the video was about to say more and more about it. And I would invite everybody to visit the page, the Smiling Foundation, to see what we do and probably uh, share the mission of what we're doing. So thank you. So. Thank you so much. Yeah. Here with my supporter, my main supporter, Julia, who is the director of the, the marriage. I know she's saying not to do that and mm -hmm. stuff, but I would like for her maybe to see if she has something to add and maybe finish with the conclusion. We give two minutes. Two minutes to Julia. <laughs> well, that's actually, I'll be very brief. I'm honored to be here and uh, fortunate to work for the company that recognizes the importance of, of breaking barriers and um, really being ahead of most of the hospitality uh, organizations out there in defeating poverty. Um, number of projects that we do here in the US, um, more and more that we do abroad. Um, throughout the day, I couldn't help to just think how um, ahead of our time we really are, but mostly how much more there is to do. And so I appreciate the opportunity to learn and uh, commit to sharing my, my findings and my learnings today with my colleagues and the leadership of the organization. Thank you. Thank you.